All right, it's Sunday, January 21st, 2024. Next up in the A10C2 training is the navigation. Let's go ahead and get going. Let's see where we're at. Still at Batumi. All right, let's do it. Welcome to the navigation training flight. I've engaged the autopilot to keep the aircraft level and on course, so please do not touch any input controls outside of the training commands you will receive. In this flight, we'll overview the navigation systems of the A-10C and practice navigation procedures. Increase throttle to about 90% core RPM to keep the aircraft above 250 knots indicated. 90%, okay. The A-10C is equipped with a complex navigation suite consisting of a number of different right systems. There. The oldest of these, originally installed on the A-10A, is a heading attitude reference system, or HARS. HARS is a general platform navigation system and accumulates significant errors as the aircraft is maneuvered in flight. It can be reset accurately only in level flight and no acceleration. Because of these limitations, HARS is considered a backup system used in case of primary navigation system failure. The primary navigation system of the A-10C is the embedded GPS, INS, or EGI, often pronounced IGI. The IGI integrates a traditional inertial navigation system, INS, and a global positioning system, GPS. Each of these two IGI components can function independently of the other. However, they are designed to work together to provide accurate worldwide position and flight navigation data. Finally, the A-10C is equipped to home on traditional radio navigation systems such as TACAD, Tactical Air Navigation, ILS, Instrument Landing System, and ADF, Automatic Direction Finder. The primary control panels used to configure the navigation systems include the Navigation Mode Select Panel, NIMSIP, on the front dash, and the Control Display Unit, CDU, on the right console. In this mission, we'll also work with the TACCAN panel on the right console. In order to minimize the time spent head down configuring the instruments instead of looking up and out of the cockpit, the A-10C features the upfront controller, UFC, below the HUD and the CDU repeater page on the MFCD. These allow you to manipulate CDU data without having to touch the CD. Navigation information is displayed to the pilot on the HUD, the TAD and CDU pages of the MFCD the CDU display, and the analog ADI and HSI instruments on the front dash. Alright. Let's begin taking a more detailed look at each component of the navigation suite. The NIMSIP, located in front of the control stick toward the bottom of the front dash, is used to select the navigation system used to feed data to the instruments and what type of navigation points to home on. Specifically, the top row of select buttons selects between HARS, IGI, and TISL, target identification set laser. You will generally use the IGI as your primary navigation system, and you can see that it is selected by default. Like HARS, TISL is an A10A legacy system that has been replaced on the A10C by the ANAAQ-28 Lighting 2 targeting pod. Along the bottom row of the NIMSIM are buttons to set the type of navigation points to home on. These include STRPT, steer point, ANCHR, anchor point, TCN, TACAN beacon, and ILS, instrument landing system. During flight operations, you will usually navigate toward a steer point, so STRPT will be the preferred selection. TACAN and ILS are used for air base approaches and landing, and the anchor point is usually the mission bullseye. In review, the selections of source navigation system on the top row and the type of navigation points on the bottom row determine which system provides steering information presented on the HUD, ADI, and HSI and toward what type of navigation point. Alright. So far so good. The PTR switch is used to stow away the pitch and roll steering bars, as well as the course warning flag on the ADI. 
two homing lights to the right of the select buttons indicate VHF or UHF radio homing when either radio is used in ADF mode. The next item we will consider is the TAD page, currently displayed on the left MFCD. The TAD includes symbology for your aircraft, currently in the center of the display, a flight plan course line, currently running along the center from top to bottom, and various other indications, which we will discuss separately. To work with the TAD page, we need to set it as our sensor of interest, SOAR. To do so, press and hold the Hotas Cooley Hat left command or the H key on the keyboard. Alternatively, you can press the TAD OSB 15. When set as SOAR, the display will become inscribed in green. I can do that. Okay, now that we have control of the TAD, Let's first scale the map out so we can see our entire flight plan for better orientation. To increase the TAD scale, press the Hold Test Demons Down command or the N key on the keyboard until the flight plan is visible. Three presses in this case. One, two, three. You can now see our flight plan consists of six waypoints, indicated by square symbols connected by course lines. The currently selected waypoint, called a steer point, is colored yellow instead of green. Also note the TAD Six. range in the upper right corner of the display, currently 40, and the map scale. The range value indicates the range to the outer ring of the display. It's important to understand the concept of waypoints. Waypoint is the generic term for all navigation points of interest, which can include the current steer point, all flight plan waypoints, mark points, and anchor points. Generally, you will be following a flight plan that consists of a number of flight plan waypoints, one of which will be usually selected as your current steer point. Using the CDU, you can edit, create, and delete waypoints either as part of a flight plan or as independent waypoints. Alright. Let's try performing the most basic navigation oh. function of cycling through the flight plan waypoints to select a current steer point. This can be done either by pressing the steer rocker key on the UFC or the steer switch on the CDU. I've highlighted both and you can try pressing both. Watch the TAD display in the data block in the bottom right corner of the HUD as you cycle through the flight plan waypoints. Press the space bar key to proceed once you cycle through the waypoints. Alright. Currently, we're on waypoint two. Let's do the Demus switch on the stick uh, up. Oops, I forgot to make the uh, flood the uh, soy. There we go. Okay, that's better. All right, let's get back here. There's three, four. Five, six, zero, one, two. Alright. And then the bad thing about using this, I guess, is that you can't see up above. You just have to watch it on the uh, CDU display down here. And I guess it's this two right here. Let's see. Yeah, two, three, four, five, six, zero, one, two. Press the space bar to continue. Alright. You can also cycle waypoints by using HOTAS controls. To do this, first make the HUD soy by pressing the HOTAS cooling hat up once or oh, the U key on the keyboard. That. An asterisk will appear on the left side of the HUD when it is set as soil. With to the do HUD this set as soil, you can cycle through the waypoints point. by pressing the Hotas Demus up or down commands repeatedly. Set waypoint 3 Copignati as your steer point. 
Alright, I can do that. Three. As you can see indicated on the HUD steer point data block, the HUD waypoint has a custom ID called Pignati. If you cycle to the following waypoint, it also has a custom ID, Poti. Mission waypoints are assigned a default ID of MSN XXX, where XXX is a numerical value starting with 001. Mark points are also assigned an alphabetical ID starting with A. Custom waypoint IDs can be created in the mission planner prior to the mission, or in flight by using the CDU waypoint edit functions. Waypoint IDs can also be used to search for waypoints in the CDU database. Make sure you have Waypoint 3 Copignata set as the steer point, and we'll turn north toward it to continue our flight. I'm going to disengage the autopilot so you can make the turn. Alright. Autopilot is off. You have control. Warning, autopilot. Let's review steer point indication presented to the pilot. Get over here. I screwed up. It's my bad. Starting with the HUD, the destination index indicates the position of the current steer point as a small square. When not set elsewhere by the pilot, the current steer point is also the center point of interest, speed. On the TAD page, the speed is displayed as a wedding cake symbol currently corresponding with waypoint 3. In the bottom right corner of the HUD display is the navigation data block, which indicates information regarding the steer point. Starting with the top line, the following is displayed. Radar altitude valid through 5,000 feet AGL, steer point number and ID, steer point distance to go and target elevation, steer point time to go, TTG, and time on target, TOT Delta, also current time. When a steer point has a designated time on target, DTOT, you can use the TTG and TOT numbers to make sure you arrive on time. In that case, you will also see a desired airspeed indication added under the airspeed indicator on the left side of the HUD. In the bottom center of the HUD is the heading tape, which indicates the current heading and desired heading bug to direct the pilot to the desired heading of the selected waypoint. When the steer point is outside the HUD field of view, the destination index will be latched to the side of the HUD in the direction of the steer point. To see this indication, set waypoint 4 Pote as your steer point. Okay. The destination really index there. is now latched to the left side of the HUD and includes two pieces of additional information the degrees of turn remaining on top of the index, and the steer point range under the index. Alright. Got it. If you change the speed from the steer point to a different location, the destination index on the HUD will change to a tadpole to avoid confusion with the target designation cue, TDC symbol. To see this indication, let's designate a speed point on the ground. Press and hold the hold test slew control down or the parent key on the keyboard to slew the TDC down toward the bottom of the HUD. Then press and hold the hold test TDC up command or left control plus up arrow keys on the keyboard to designate a speed just ahead of the aircraft. Alright, you gotta get down here where there's no X. There. There we go. Long up. And the team is uh, button on the... The HUD is now indicating both the tadpole destination index and the speed location as a TDC with a line leading to the total velocity vector. The tadpole is latched to the side of the HUD in the direction of the steer point, and the tadpole tail is indicating bearing to the steer point relative to your current position. Yep. Up. Okay. 
Let's now discuss the CDU. First, set the right MFCD as a CDU repeater. To do so, press the Home Task Cooling Hat Right command, or press the K key on the keyboard twice to cycle the CDU page, or press the CDU OSB 13 on the right MFCD. Alright. As you can see, the right MFCD is duplicating the display of the CDU. We can now work with the CDU directly, or use the UFC and MFCD commands to view and edit CDU data. The CDU is currently displaying the waypoint page as indicated by the page title on the top left corner of the display. The top line also indicates the name of the currently active flight plan, F1 in this case, and the waypoint number of the steer point. Yep. Waypoint for... The rest of the CDU display on this page is used to present data on the waypoint indicated on the third line which is not necessarily the same waypoint as our current steer point. This allows you to view and edit waypoints without deselecting the active steer point information on the HUD and front dash instrumentation. For example, to view or edit the data for our current steer point, which is waypoint 4 Bolton, we can select this waypoint on the CDU by searching either for the waypoint number or the ID. Let's try searching for the number first. To do so, press the 4 key on the UFC. You will see the number appear on the UFC scratch pad at the bottom of the HUD and the CDU page of the MFCD. Then press OSB 19 to enter the number into search. Alright, press 4 here. There it is on the scratch pad on the HUD. Select it over here. You should now see detailed four. information about waypoint 4 both day on the CDU, Ooh. including the waypoint elevation, desired time on target, and coordinates. Note, as indicated on the bottom right corner of the CDU page, this is page 1 of 2 of the display. To see the additional information on page 2, press the function key on the UFC, followed by the data down rocker key. Function, data down. Page 2 displays page two. additional waypoint information and options, including command steering indication scales, steering origin destination setting, desired time to go, desired time on target, and vertical navigation setting. Once you've looked over page 2 of the waypoint page, return to page 1 by pressing the UFC function key followed by the data of rocker key. Alright. Seen enough. Function up. Now let's try the alternate method and search for a waypoint by ID. Let's also try using the CDU instead of the UFC to enter the data. Using the keyboard buttons on the CDU, Type in KOP as the initial characters of the ID for waypoint 3, Copignati, and then press the line select key R3 on the CDU to enter it into search. Alright, K O P. There we go. While we are working with the CDU, it's a good time to cover the important functionality of the steer point and page select dials on the auxiliary avionics panel, AAP. The steer point dial selects between waypoint databases. When set to flight plan, the CDU will cycle through flight plan waypoints only. When set to mark, the CDU will cycle through mark points only. When set to mission, the CDU will cycle through all non-mark points in the database, including the flight plan waypoints. Note that the flight plan will appear on the tab page only when the dial is set to flight plan. The page dial selects between main pages of the display. When set to waypoint, the waypoint main page will be displayed, indicating information on the selected waypoint. When set to steer, the steer point main page will be displayed, indicating information on the selected steer point. When set to position, the position main page will be displayed, indicating information on the aircraft's current position. The other page is used to edit data in the CDU. When not set to other, all of the other pages are read only and no data can be entered into the CDU. Set waypoint 4 Poti as your steer point. I will disengage the autopilot so you can turn west toward waypoint 4. We're on waypoint 4. Autopilot is off. You have control. Alright. I try to bank looking at that ADI down there. We're like on a. I guess that'd be like a 
30 degree bank panel. Autopilot is on. There we go. To navigate a flight plan accurately, you need to fly along the desired course line for each waypoint. To do so, set the HSI course arrow to the desired course for the waypoint and follow the course deviation indicator CDI on the HSI. For example, our flight plan calls for a course of 270 for waypoint 4. To obtain correct CDI indication, set the HSI course to 270 by rotating the HSI uh, course set knob. Press the space bar key to proceed when the HSI course is set to 270. Should we be 270 someplace? I'll see that. 270. Space bar when we're ready. Could have gone the other way, that'd have been smarter. 270 Space bar. The HSI course deviation indicator, CDI, and the ADI steering bar will now direct you toward the desired course line. In order to approach the waypoint on the desired course, you would maneuver the jet to follow the ADI steering bar toward the CDI until the CDI okay. is aligned with the course arrow pointing toward the steer point and the steering bar is centered on the ADI. Press the right. space bar key to proceed to the next lesson topic. Let's now okay, try homing bar. on attack end station. To do this, first select TCN navigation mode on the NIMSA. Now we need to set the desired TACAN channel. For example, to home in on the Sanak TACAN station, we'll set it to 31X. First, roll the mouse wheel up over the left channel selector knob to set the second channel digit to 3. Roll the mouse wheel up over the right channel selector knob to set the third channel digit to 1. Now power up the TAC cam receiver by setting the mode dial to TR, transmit receive. And this is a right link. Set. The bearing pointer 1 needle on the HSI is now indicating bearing to the selected TAC cam station and the range indicator on pointer the HSI one. is indicating the range. You can also hear the TAC cam station's ID being transmitted in Morse code. You can turn down the TAC cam ID volume using the volume knob on the TACAN control panel. If a TACAN approach is desired on a particular yet. heading, turn the HSI set course knob to the desired course. The HSI, CDI, and ADI steering bar will then indicate steering commands for the set course toward the TACAN station. Press the space bar key to proceed when set. Was I supposed to do something? Let's see. Well, I don't know if we're going to hear it or not. It depends on whether or not the, uh, the uh, audio is turned on over here. Um, I think out is on. Yeah, I'm right clicking. So let's see. Okay, so it was not on. So we should hear it now. But why are we not? Oh, it's supposed to be 30x. 30x? 31x. I think it was 31 and we just started hearing it. There we go. That's better. Alright. So this is the direction. 12 miles. We can set our course set inside with that. Right there. Excellent. Alright, now we're ready for the space bar.
we'll end this lesson here. You can continue to practice using the navigation system right. to navigate the flight plan waypoints. Well, that was smooth and easy, sort of. Uh, what I want to do is... The hardest thing for me is I prefer to use this segment. Uh, domestic aircraft use this segment for ILS approaches where when this segment is in line with the arrow and the tail, you're in line with something. I'm trying to get this yellow to be in line vertically is not easy, but it's too small to read. How do I enlarge this? Oh. Check tech in here before I hit the mountains. Uh, visual operation chart. So here's all the different places in this terrain. Down to the bottom, of course. Tack in 44X. All right. Right here. Right in front of my eyes. So, I want to find out. It says 31X. 44X. 31X. There it is. Wow, that's not the name that I saw down there on the tab display. Uh, but here it is, 31X, tack in 31X, and it's named Sanaki. Wow. Interesting. Tumi, Kokinari, Poe, no, just a few of the wave. So, we'd have to use the attack hand to actually get back there. This is kind of fun. This is interesting. Alright, where's... 31 miles away. Eight. It's all upside down. Six miles. Must be this right here. Doesn't have a name listed. Is this it upside down? Sanaki Koki Wow Yeah, just Flying right over it right now There it is That's how the tech can works. 
I have a button set up on my stick so I can go to the uh, knee pad easily. But here's my question. What's our speed at? Okay, we're above 200. Good. Uh, let's search for... SEN. Do I know how to use this? Not really. S E N. Oh no, we're still on page two. Shoot! Hey, there it is there. Sanaki Koki. Um, but we can't search for it here. No. Uh, we have to get. Alright, we gotta change the page. How do you do it from here? Page. There we go. Sanaki. Boom! Okay, so it should be up here now. There it is. I'm learning. Now. Elevation. Location. Direction, whatever. Got this. How do you get more information? Let's use this to page down because it was easier. Page down. Uh, field info? Look at this. Field FLD info. What the heck? Hey! Look at this! And field info. Here we are. The TACAN. Here's the ILS 108.9 for runway 9. Is this cool or what? Field info. How do you go back? If you want to go to the previous page. And I can do it down here because I saw a previous. There was a previous. If I hit this, will I go back? There you go! Excellent! Except this doesn't say field info down here. That was page two that had that. Okay, page two. Click down. Page two, field info. Alright, there you go. ILS, runway ILS, tack in. Here's the frequencies for the uh, approach and the tower. They're both 261 or 132. Alright, now I really have finished this video. If you made it this far, I learned as much as you did. <laughs> That's it for now.